actually just on a small tangent. So how, how do you have a productive day? Do you have any insights on how to manage your time optimally? Yeah. I, I mean, I've gone the gamut of from obsessive time tracking in 15 minute buckets mm-hmm. to kind of like the, the other extreme where it's more, um, kind of like large scale, some deep work here, two hour bucket, you know, account for an hour of lunch and some other thing. But now, now I just roughly, because I manage a team and there's some things that kind of come up. I, it's only a team of two. It's not like big, but I just have things that are not necessarily controllable by me. I like have to take some meetings or whatever. It's not as easy to plan out my day ahead of time. So I do a lot of retrospective time management where I look at my day and that's what I mostly do now. Um, and I account, did I spend this day productively? What could I do better? And then try to implement it in the future. So a lot of this, I realized, is very personal for me. I do very well in long streaks of working. And if I I can't do a lot of work in 15 minutes, I can't do a lot of work in even an hour. But if you give me like three hours or five hours or six hours of uninterrupted work, that's like, that's where I get most of my stuff done. So from the, it just, it'd be fun to explore those. And when you did 15 minute buckets, so you have a day in front of you yeah, and you have like a Google sheet or a spreadsheet or yeah, something. Was, and, yeah, I did an Excel. Excel. Uh, and you're, do you have a plan for the day or do you go like when you did it uh, or you just literally sort of focus on a particular task and then you're tracking as you're doing that task of that, every 15 minutes? Yeah, I would kind of do it live. Um, I'm not, so one of the reasons I'm so obsessive about it is because I'm not organized by nature mm-hmm. and I lost like in college, I learned how much lack of organization can just hurt you in terms of output. And so I realized like I just had to build systems that would enable me to become more organized. So uh, really, I think I think that doing that really taught me a lot about time in the same way that tracking calories can teach you about food. Yes. Like just learning, accounting for these things will give you skills that eventually you might not need to track on such a granular level because you've kind of like figured out. So that's kind of how I feel about it. I think everyone should, if you care about productivity and stuff, should do a little bit of it. I don't think it's sustainable in the long term. It just takes so much effort and time to like, and I think the marginal imp- effect of it in the long term is kind of minimal once you learn these basic skills. But um, yeah, I was basically tracking like live what I did. And what I saw is that a lot of my real work would be done in small sections of the day. And then it'd be like a lot of just nothing, like a lot of small things where I'm busy, but little is being achieved. And so I think that's a really interesting insight. I've never figured out how to unbusy myself and focus on the like core essentials. I'm still getting to that. But um, it is interesting realizing most of your day is like a lot of nothing. And then like some real deep work where most of your value comes from is like 20% of your day. Yeah, I try to start every day with that. So the hardest task of the day and you focus for long periods of time. And I also have the segment of two hours where it's a set of tasks that I do every single day. Well, the idea is you do that for like your whole life. It's like long-term investment of Anki and it's just like learning and um, reminding yourself of facts you know that they're useful in your everyday life and then for me also music i'll play a little bit of music I play just, piano piano and so like keeping that regular thing is sure. part of your life and one thing that i've really taken from this is because i've read all the like i had a self-improvement phase in my early 20s um and one thing you learn is that everyone wants to give you a broad general solution but really the real trick of figuring out like optimizing is figuring out the things that work for you specifically. So like yeah. one interesting thing you said is like, oh, I like to do my hard work at the beginning of the day. Um, I know a lot of people recommend this. I've tried so many times and I just do better work late at night. Mm-hmm. And so usually my streak of work is like from like after dinner, 7.30 to like 2 a.m. That's my prime time. Um And so like a lot of my videos, which you'll see, which is like lit from this studio, which appears to be daytime, it's like shot at 3 Mm a.m., you know, just like in a caffeine fueled rush. Um, But that's kind of how it works for me. And then also like with the social outlets and stuff like that, which it's easy. And I know I feel like we think similarly on this. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to discount these things as less relevant because they don't have 
quantitative metrics associated with them. But in terms of longevity and like, I think to be able to do creative work, there's an amount of recharge and like re-inputting stuff that is frequently discounted by people like us who are like obsessed with, you know, quantitative metrics. And so I really found that some of the, my best work gets done after I take like a break or I like, I'll, I'll go play like live sets uh, of music. And I mean, like, that's like for me really recharging, but nowhere on a spreadsheet is, th- is that going to show up as productive or like meaningful. But for me, for whatever reason, it recharges me in a way that like I need to pay attention to. Yeah, for sure. I, I usually have a spreadsheet of 15 minute increments when I'm socially interacting with people uh, and I evaluate how- uh, I'm getting roasted right now. No, I'm not. It's actually, <laughs> I uh, probably roasting myself, but I do find that when I do have social interactions, I like to do with people that are in outside of that exceptionally busy of themselves. Cause then you understand the value of time. And when you understand the value of time, your interaction becomes more intimate and intense. Like the the cliche of work hard, party hard, or whatever the cliche is. Play hard. Mean, play hard, damn it. Whatever the uh, in, more English social interaction. Second, like, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um uh, uh the, the that I mean that cliche, there's a truth to that, but the intensity of the social interaction, even like you know, it's not even the intensity, like it's not even the party hard. It's like um even if you're going hiking and relaxing and taking in nature. So it's very relaxed, but you understand the value of that. There's when you put a huge amount of value on those moments spent in nature, that recharges me much more. So you have to surround yourself with people that think of life that way that think about the value of every single moment. That's one of the things you do when you break it up in 15 minute increments, is you realize how much time there's in the day, how much yeah. awesomeness there's in the day to experience, to get done and so on. And then so you can feel that when you're with somebody. Um, and then for me personally, like when I interact with people, I really like to be fully present for the, the interaction. Like I can tell this is, for anyone who has, you know, I've been the audience forever, so I I haven't been on this side of the table before. You're very intense. You look right in the eye. You're well, like, I don't know about right in the eye. Eye contact is an issue, but yes, Lex I'm has there. a soulful gaze, guys. Just in case you're wondering, yeah. it's very soulful. All right, it's very All right. comforting. It's like a All warm right, back, hug. Back, back back to serious talk. Okay. <laughs>